Welcome to Recipe Wars. My name is BC Hoffman. And my name is Judith Jones. And today we are doing a chili cook-off. So today we're gonna go head to head and I'm doing Emerald's um, Chuck Wagon Chili. Mm -hmm. And I will be doing Giada De Laurentiis' Short Rib Chili. Oh, short nice. ribs. It's gonna be a tough one. Uh, it's gonna be head to head and you're going down. You're going down. Oh, <laughs> let's do this. So let's take a quick look over at... Uh, the one that we're going to demonstrate is uh, what we call a chuck wagon chili. Okay. Uh, it's a beef chili. We're using chuck meat. What we want to do is season it with salt and pepper. While we're doing that, we're going to take a combination of spices, Elizabeth. Okay. We're going to take some bay leaves, and we're going to take chili powder. That's a lot of chili powder. Yep. Cumin seeds. Mm, I love okay. cumin. Cayenne pepper, cinnamon, and brown cinnamon. sugar. Yep. And brown sugar. And, so it's and this is spicy and sweet. It's spicy and sweet at the same time, but okay. really good. So we're going to leave that for right now. Short rib chili with creamy corn polenta. Succulent meat with rich, smoky flavors. Served over polenta and topped with a sweet surprise. We're going to start with the New Mexico chilies. They're also known as um, Anaheim chilies, and they're dried. We've got our ancho chilies, which are also known as dried poblanos. Let's flip our short ribs. Ooh, yeah. So you're using short ribs, and I'm using beef chuck. And on the beef carcass, there's actually a 13 sets of ribs that they actually have. So uh, one through five is the chuck itself. Six through 12 is the actual um, rib, and 13 is the loin. So you actually have more of the pricier meat, whereas mm -hmm. I'm using the, uh, the cheaper cut. So let's get this recipe war head to head started. Yes, let's. Okay, well, Giada starts her recipe off with her chilies, of course. And right here, I have two types of chilies. We have Anaheim or New Mexico chilies, um, which are kind of mild in flavor, named Anaheim because Ortega brought them to Anaheim in the 40s, brought the seeds there. So these are lovely to have in the chili. And also we have some poblano peppers, or ancho chiles, as they're called when they're dried. So what we're gonna do is just take a couple, and we can either snap them with our hands, which works just fine. And what we wanna do with the chilies is tenderize them and get them nice and soft before we blend them. Now another thing is, if you don't want it to be too spicy, Definitely take out the seeds before you mm -hmm. actually put them in your pan because the seeds are gonna add bitterness and spice. That's right, the seeds have the spice. So, in with the chilies goes one and a half cups of water. And we're gonna bring that up to a high heat until it boils. And then once it boils, we're gonna turn it down, let it simmer covered for about five to six minutes until it gets nice and tender. So while you're doing that, I actually just started getting my pot, nice and hot. And I have a big, big pot right here because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting in my oil. I've got two tablespoons of vegetable oil right there. And then I've got my chuck. So I've got three pounds of beef chuck right here. It's cut into smaller cubes. Now the size of cube is really how big you want it. Um, and I'm just going to go, I have nice bite sized pieces. Now realize this is going to be tenderized so it's going to be nice and uh, soft when you're chewing on it. So it really doesn't matter how big. but you know, the smaller the cut, the easier to swallow, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna let this brown. So we're gonna set our chilies to the side and let them soak until they get nice and tender. And then we're gonna start with our meat. So in a large pot, we're gonna add the oil. Get it to a medium high heat and get that oil hot. And then we're gonna take our short rib. So I've just laid them here on a baking tray with aluminum foil, or aluminum foil, as the Americans call it. And um, we've laid them, we've put salt and pepper on them, and we are just going to put them in our pot in batches. And what we wanna do is brown them on all sides. We don't wanna cook them through, that's not the idea, just to get them a nice brown color, so. While you're doing that, I'm actually gonna throw in my spices to my meat, which has been browning. You got three tablespoons chili powder, I've got one tablespoon of cumin, three quarter cinnamon, one quarter cayenne. I've got one and a half of Southwest seasoning and I've got a little paprika and one bay leaf all going in that pot right there. Boom, get it all in there. Or as Emerald would say, fitting, bam! My meat's brown. I'm gonna take my onions now. I've got 
three cups of onions. I've got them nice and chopped up, and they're going right in there. And you're just gonna keep that in there and mix it all together, and you're gonna want it to just get the onions nice and soft. Basically sweat the onions, essentially. And that's gonna take about mm, eight minutes or so. And I'm working in batches, so I've got my first batch in there, getting browned, and once they're brown, we'll take them out and we'll do the next batch. Alrighty, so I have my onions, they're nice and sweated, and I am going to now put in my garlic. So I'm gonna throw in my two tablespoons of garlic that I have chopped, and you just wanna put that in until it's nice and fragrant, so as soon as you smell that garlic, about 30 seconds, it's ready to go. My short ribs are nicely brown now, so I am gonna add into this flavorful oil the red onion and the garlic as well. So let them get translucent soft for about five minutes. So while that's going on, I've got me some burr. That's right. So you burr. can use burr, it's cold outside. So I, I kind of like this addition of beer in your chili. Now the beautiful thing is, is, is it calls for two bottles, but it really doesn't need two bottles. I'd say it needs about one and a half bottles, so that other half bottle is uh, just a little nice imbibement right there in my belly. Yeah. Um, so you're going to throw this in, and it's basically, you're just going to put it in, and as soon as that foam subsides, which is going to take about a minute or so, you're going to be able to put the rest of the ingredients in. You can use light beer or dark beer. This recipe specifically called for a dark beer. Light beer doesn't really have that much flavor, and a darker beer is great, however, it can also come across as bitter if it's cooked uh, too long. I personally am a huge fan for chili. I would definitely use either a wheat beer or a nice amber ale or even chimay. Chimay would work Ooh, great in some chili. Nice. So as my onion and garlic are sauteing there, I am going to blend the chili and water together. And we want to get it to a nice puree to add into the chili. So they've softened now. They've got nice and tender. Um, they've been soaking there for about five minutes. And you can either blend these in a blender or you can use one of these lovely machines. You can smell those chiles. They smell so good. While you're doing that, I'm actually ready to throw in my tomatoes. Now this recipe calls for a lot of tomatoes. I would traditionally not put as much tomato, but I would definitely add tomato to the recipe. Just not as much as Emeril's does call for. It calls for one whole can, 28 ounce can of stewed tomatoes with the juices. So you're gonna throw that in. And then we're gonna throw in one can of crushed tomatoes. That's a 14 and a half ounce can. Then we've got two tablespoons of tomato paste. Throw that in there. And then we've got one full cup of beef broth. That's going in. Boom. So you're probably wondering, what is mole? So a mole sauce is actually a generic uh, chili sauce that's from Mexico. There's about 50 different variations of it. Um, and it's just a different blend of chilies. And usually it has a chocolate mole, uh, which is just amazing. Because yeah. it's bittersweet chocolate, so it's got hints of the cocoa, but at the same time it's got the spice. And it's just really good to go with any dish. Yeah, and they can range chili. from spicy to sweet. Really good. Oh, yeah. He likes me some mole. Oh, yeah. Anyway, into my onions and garlic, which have gotten nice and translucent, I'm going to add this chile puree. And in chile with an E. Chile, chile. And then I'm going to add in my oregano or oregano, and my cumin. Nice Mexican spices there. And this wonderful addition of espresso. And that's just going to give it a lovely, rich, um, deep taste. And again, we were just talking about how mole has a bunch of different variations. That right there is also going to make it really come out in flavor. Yeah, it is. And then to that, let's just give that a stir. And then we're going to add some agave to the pot. And that's going to bring out the sweetness and a really nice contrast against the bitterness of the coffee and the chocolate. Now, agave is just a sweetener that is extracted from the agave plant in Mexico. Um, so really nice, a, a very sweet, so you don't need too much of it. So in goes the agave, and then in goes our beef broth. Where are you? There we are. So all of that goes into the pot. So mine's at a boil right now. I'm gonna reduce it so it just goes to a simmer. So if you're trying to figure out what the difference between a boil and a simmer is, so it's quick bubbles repetitively coming up versus just a slow, steady amount of bubbles like here and there. And into my lovely rich mix, I'm gonna add our short ribs back in there. 
We want to get that to a simmer. We're going to put a cover on that. And then we're going to put that in the oven for about two and a half hours and let those short ribs get really nice and tender. So this is going to be, like I said, for an hour and a half. And then as soon as you're ready, we're going to take it off and uh, we're just going to add some masa harina. Now you can use anything at home. You can use all-purpose flour in case you don't have masa harina, which is essentially just Mexican flour. It's cornmeal. Um, and it's traditionally used as a thickening agent. But they also use it for tamales, tortillas, and chili de relleno. Yeah. So that is going to go into the oven now at 325 for two and a half hours. All right. Well, my short ribs have been in the oven braising for about two and a half hours. They are nice and succulent and tender. Ooh, that looks good and smells amazing. That waft of the chili is very nice. So what we're going to do now is take out the short ribs and put them on a chopping board or a baking tray. And we just want to cut up those nice pieces of tender meat and take them off the bone and take the membranes from them. So let's get a sharp knife. And if it's too hot, you can use your tongs to help. So we're just going to take the membrane and the bone off the meat and we're going to cut it oh, there's some membrane there. There we go. into little pieces. And that's going to make a really great meat for our chili sauce. Another real good trick is just to take a fork and kind of just shred yeah, it right shred off there. Yeah, shred it there, yeah. That's what I like to do. And you can just kind of see it just falls right off and mm. just tears right apart when you're shredding it with the fork. That's what I like to do at home when I make my short ribs. Uh, actually, and I only did that so I could try it, really. I bet you did. Mm. You know I might win this one. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do that with the remainder of the short ribs. While you're doing that, I'm actually going to take my chili. The one thing that I have to do before it's completely done is, one, is I want to take off any excess fat, so I want to skim the fat. Now, there's two ways you can do it. One is just ladling the fat and taking any excess fat that you see. And basically, the excess fat is going to just look like oil on the top of your chili. And you want to just skim that right off. You can use a ladle, you can use a spoon, or you can even use a piece of bread just to sop it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my masa harina and I'm just going to throw that in. And that, again, is your Mexican cornmeal. And that's going to be your thickening agent right there. Mix that all around. What I really like to do, I love serving my chili right over macaroni and cheese. It's a great accompaniment. And Giada serves hers over polenta, which I think is a great accompaniment. If you have any excess chili and you're like, well, what should I do with the rest of my chili? Well, there's a bunch of different things. One, you can use it for tacos, you can use it for enchiladas, you can use it for omelets the next morning. So don't worry if you have leftover chili because chili is a necessity to have in the household. I like it cold, cold in the morning mm. for breakfast. Like my Chinese food and my pizza. <laughs> All right, so we've shredded our short rib. Uh, we've taken the fat away, taken the bones away. And what we want to do is put that back into our lovely juicy pan with all those lovely spices and juices from the garlic and onion. Really nice. Now make sure you season your chili, salt and pepper. Enough of that on there. I'm going to add this little bit of chile in adobo sauce just to give it that extra little kick. Mm. Who wants some spice up in here? Spicy. And I have drained some black beans, and that's going to give it some nice body and texture in the chili. So in that goes too. And if you want a more saucy version of your chili, by all means, you can keep the liquid that the black beans were in. So I'm actually ready to serve mine. So I'm just going to give it a quick stir. And put it right up in that bowl. You got that right there. Wow. And then I'm just going to add a little cilantro to it. And I'm just going to pick it right apart right there. Throw it right on top. And another, I mean, the beautiful thing about chili is the fact that you can literally use any garnish you want. You know, whatever you want. You can use bacon, you can use truffles, you can use eggs, you can use cheese, you can use cilantro, you can use parsley. Mm -hmm. The list is endless. Jalapeno. It really is up to you. I mean, the way you want to flavor it, I like taking cotija cheese, oh, cilantro, yeah. jalapeno, and avocado, 
and bacon, of oh. course. <laughs> and, uh, you just and took it to another level, Macy, <laughs> right there. I just made it amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna spoon up my short rib chili, and that looks just beautiful. And of course, to top that off, we're gonna add some green onions and the pièce de résistance, your chocolate, your cocoa. And that is just gonna give such a wonderful flavor against that espresso that's in there, the spice, oh, very much like a mole. I do like the fact that you topped yours off, whereas mine was actually cooked Integrated, into yeah. it. yeah. All right, and there you have it. Boom, chili, ready to eat. So we just plated our chili, cleaned up the kitchen, and garnished our chili. And now we're about to find out who, in this recipe war head-to-head -head battle, is the winner. Uh, you can start with Giada, of course. Yeah. And I have a nice block of bittersweet dark chocolate oh. to put on top of there. So we're just going to flick a oh, look at that. I mean, I could just eat this itself, but I won't. Let's try it. Let's do it. Go for it. Alrighty. Oh, God. I love short ribs. Oh my god, me too. Mmm. 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 Very rich. A lot of flavors, smokiness, the spice, the richness of the chocolate and the espresso. I, I really like, you definitely get the espresso kicked in. Mm -hmm. And the chocolate really just like leaves a nice and semi sweet taste on it. And um, I love that tender texture of the short rib. It's uh, just such a nice difference. It melts than a right in your mouth. Chili. And the emeralds. I'll just give this one a whirl. Okay. Ooh, it's a nice texture. I was gonna say this. Mm. I like the spice. Very tomatoey. Mm -hmm. Very tomatoey, but great flavor though. The flavor is very good. Um, you're right. You, you can taste those tomatoes. You, you it doesn't have it doesn't have the texture that no, the short ribs has. It doesn't like melt right in your mouth. Mm. It does have a great texture though. And um, the spice. And the, the spice, spice really is nice. If I had a little bit more spice in mine, it would be just right. This is a tough one. It is a tough one. Here's the thing. So, for taste alone, I would say if you combined both of them, I think it would be <laughs> yeah. amazing. Your sauce with my short ribs. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. For taste, I really like yours because I just love the short ribs. I love the short ribs. I love the chocolate. I love the espresso. Um, for simplicity, and originality um, to to the original chili, I would say mine. Mm. So the question is, do you go with simplicity and the original recipe, or do you go with something more unique and more complicated and difficult to do? You know what, this time, I'm gonna vote for myself. Giada, I love you. This is it, this is the winner for me. I think Giada is the winner in today's Recipe War head-to-head -head battle. Giada was the winner in today's Recipe War head-to-head -head battle, and Emeralds was a close second. Tear, tear. My name is BC Hoffman. And my name is Judith Jones. Please follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our channel. Catch us next time on Recipe Wars. Mmm. <laughs>